Welcome to the second episode of Alpha Tutorials Podcast. We're a little bit late with this podcast. We've um, been fighting winter chills and flu and being without a voice for a week uh, kind of set things back a little bit. We're glad to be back. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Alpha 35. We're going to be looking at how to update the firmware on your Alpha 33, your 55, as well as the NEX3 and the NEX5. And we'll also be answering the reader's question or viewer's question. To kick off, we want to take a look at the Alpha 35. We uh, mentioned in the last episode that the 35 and the NEX C3 had just been launched. And what we're going to be looking at is we've had a bit more time to play with these cameras and get used to them. And we just want to give you some heads up on some of the key differences between the Alpha 35 and the Alpha 33, its predecessor. Essentially, what Sony have done is with the Alpha 35, they've gone and put the 16 megapixel sensor, which is in the Alpha 55 in here. Um, it still does the 7 frames a second and not the 10 frames a second, which the Alpha 33 had, was in the same uh, feature set with. But what they've also done to try and cut costs by the looks of things is taken away the flip-out screen that the Alpha 33 had. Um, for us, that's a bit of a key feature. There's not a huge difference in terms of image quality between 16 megapixels and 14 megapixels. So the Alpha 35 really doesn't have an upper advantage from that point of view. Um, and the screen missing is, is for us, it's a key feature. It's something we use quite a lot. Um, so we're a little bit sad to see that go. We understand why they've done it to try and improve the, the costs and that. Um, but our advice to you would be to, to go and run out there and grab whatever Alpha 33 stock is, is left, particularly considering that it may be a bit cheaper and, and at a similar price point the 35 will be when it launches. Um, and with today, as we go into the tutorial on how to update the firmware, the other key feature difference on the 35, which is the, the, the scene selections and the improved filters like pop-out filters or, or um, partial color, are things that you'll be able to get on the Alpha 33 and the 55 with the firmware upgrade. So let's take a look to our tutorial section and take a look at how we can upgrade the firmware. Um, on an Alpha 33. The process for upgrading the firmware on the Alpha 33 and the 55 is the same. It's also the same on the NEX uh, 3 and the NEX 5 as well. The firmware update that we're going to be doing is the firmware that Sony launched on the 20th of June. And so we're going to take a look at that firmware and see what we can do and, and how to go about updating the firmware. Often when I talk to people about firmware updates, they get this very nervous look on their face, like they don't want to damage their camera or have it explode. Um, so we're going to take you through the process today to make sure that it's easy enough for you to be able to do. The first thing that you need to make sure you have is a fully charged battery in your camera. Um, if, you don't, if you're fortunate enough to have a, an AC power adapter for it, then connect it to that, but it doesn't normally come supplied with it. So just make sure you've got a fully charged battery. You don't want to have the camera battery going on you halfway through the update process and, and you sit with a, a paperweight. So the first thing that you want to do, put yourself a fully charged battery inside here. The next thing we want to do is we want to head over to the um, Sony website uh, for us here in South Africa, sony.co.za. Near the top of the website, you're going to find a section which says support. And you hover over that and you'll find it says find drivers, uh, software or frequently asked questions. We're going to click on over there. Um, and you're going to have on the side a find support for your model. If you know the model, which in this particular case, if it's an Alpha 33 or 55, the, the code is going to be SLT-A33 or 55, and it'll drop up a help menu to show to you what, uh, what is there. The other thing is to, if you've got the NEX, it'll be NEX-3 or-5. So we're going to go Alpha, the SLT-A33. I'm going to click on there and go Go. And it's going to bring up a support page for the Alpha 33. And here you'll be able to download the manuals, um, frequently asked questions. You'll see tutorials on this particular product as well. Um, if you go over to the download section, it'll bring up here the areas that you're able to download. It's going to ask you for your operating system. In our particular case, it's Windows 7. And there it gives us the firmware update as well as picture motion browser that we can download as well. The firmware update tells us it was released on the 20th of June 2011 and it's version 2. If you've already bought your camera prior to the 20th of June, you pretty, can be pretty sure it's not going to have version 2 firmware on it. But if you want to make certain, turn the camera on and then go into your menu. And the very last menu, the one that has a little spanner on the top, is your setup menu. And you'll see as you drop down towards the middle the section that says version. When you click on that, it'll tell you this particular camera is running version 1.1. 1 
So we know we need to do the update here to version 2. So what we're now going to do is we're going to click on this download the page. Um, it's going to come up with a place for us to select that we, it gives a whole bunch of instructions on how to check the firmware version and then how the software update will happen. And as you scroll down to the bottom, it will also ask you to um, accept terms and conditions before you download the file. We've already downloaded the file, so we're going to go ahead here and just minimize our browser. And uh, here on the desktop, we've saved our um, firmware software. So we're going to double click on that. It takes a little while to open. We're going to tell it to run. And uh, it'll open up with this particular window over here. Now it's going to tell us to turn the camera on. Um, select USB from the setup. So again, where we check the version, we can go and select what we want the camera to do when we connect it via USB. We want it to have set as mass storage. Then we're going to take our USB cable and we want to connect it to the computer over there. The USB cable would have come supplied in the box when you purchased it. Um, although fortunately now it's a standard mini USB um, cable there, so you should be able to get a replacement if you've lost it easily enough. Then it's going to just, uh, Windows is telling us it's busy updating and it's installing the device. And once it's done that, we're able to go and click on Next. And it's verifying the connection to the computer, uh, or to the camera, and it tells us that we need to check the version, which we've done. We're going to click Next again. Um, verify the version of the update information on the bottom left-hand corner of the screen, which is correct. We can see over here that it's giving us version 1 current, and we want to update to version 2. So we're going to click on Next again. And it's going to ask us to reset the camera by pressing Enter. It's going to go and verify the connection again. Telling us to please wait. And asking us to run the update. Click on run. Be very, very careful not to unplug the USB cable at this particular point um, or to turn off the camera. Let the camera run the update completely. It's giving us a little progress bar here on the bottom and we've got a little way to go in terms of, of that update taking place. The update, just for information's sake, is a 41 megabyte file for the Alpha 33 that you'll need to download. Um, so be prepared for it to take a little while depending on the speed of your connection. And there we go. So it's busy finalizing that update. And the update process has been completed. Click on finish. There we go. There we have it. It's that simple. On some of your older SLRs, it was a little bit more difficult to do the update um, because you would have to copy a file onto your SD card and hold six buttons at one time to do it. Um, if we have the opportunity to show you such an update on, on one of the older alphas, we will do so. Um, but for the Alpha 33, the 55, uh, the NEX 3 and 5, it's very simple. The application runs through the cable like that, and it's a step-by-step -step easy to do process in terms of being able to, to do your uh, firmware update. Well, what we want to move on to now is the a question that we got from Cheryl Teodora. She, she asked us, um, basically, how do you get that effect when a picture is black and white and one particular color stays in color? And with the firmware update that we've got now on the Alpha 33, or which thankfully came about from the Alpha 35, or on your Alpha 55, as well as the NEXC, uh, NEXC3, the NEX5, or NEX3, once you've done the firmware update, you'll have a mode there under the scene selection, which um, is called partial color. Basically, on your scene selections, previously this was where you would go and set um, your portraits, your sports mode, your macro, all of those kind of things. And the further down you scroll, you'll be able to go and find sections which have what we call partial color. So it will give you partial color um, red, green, blue, or yellow. So any particular scene that you photograph with the, one of those colors is there, depending on the mode you've set it, that color will stay out and everything else will go into black and white. Of course, if you don't have one of the new alphas, it's a little bit more tricky. You can only have that mode to be able to give you the partial color. Then you're going to have to go and do a technique in Photoshop or a photo editing program of a similar nature to be able to get that result. I'm going to show you a quick version, a way of doing it. The thing about Photoshop that you need to remember is there's always a number of different ways to get to the same destination with Photoshop. This is just one particular way that you can introduce a partial color effect. 
um, there are other ways. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to go over, I've got this particular photograph with a couple of different colors there, and I'm going to go to my layers, and I'm going to go and duplicate this layer. And I'm going to call this layer BW for black and white. Okay, there's my new layer. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and say enhance. Notice I'm currently set on that black and white layer. I'm going to go and say enhance. And I'm going to say convert to black and white. Just the easiest way to do it. Some people may want to use a channel mixer or desaturate. It's up to you. But convert to black and white in Photoshop Elements 8 gives you the option to go and set different types of quality of black and white. I'm going to go there on Urban Snapshots for this particular photograph, and I'm going to click OK. Once you've done that, and you still set on that particular black and white layer, you can now go and select, select your eraser tool, select the size of the brush that you want, and obviously if you want to be more accurate in your detail, you can zoom into the scene. But what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to go and take this and quickly hold down my eraser and erase these particular sections here, and there we go, there's my blue window. So that's one of the benefits that you have with being able to do this. And of course here you're not limited to one particular color. You have the ability to go and erase any particular part of the scene that you wish to erase. Using a touchpad on the laptop is probably not the best way to do this. You want to bring out your graphics tablet or, or your mouse to get the best results. So there you have it. That's one of the easiest ways to do it. As I said, there are other ways and other softwares to get that effect. But if you don't have it in camera, the downside is you're going to spend a little bit more time editing your images, but on the upside you're going to also have the ability to go and um, get a little bit more precise and, and select particular parts of the image that you want. Well, that's it for today's show. Basically, um, we've covered the Alpha 35, we've taken a look at, at updating your firmware, um, and we've also looked at ways that you can get partial color results. If you have any other questions for us, please head over to the website, alphatutorials.co.za. There you'll be able to ask us questions. You'll also be able to catch up on the latest news, and you'll be able to see some of the articles we've written related to these shows. For example, in our first podcast, we briefly touched on the exposure uh, values of ISO, um, aperture and shutter speeds. And with the, the website, you will find in-depth articles around each of those particular areas. So feel free to head over to the website, alphatutorials.co.za. You'll be able to grab it there, watch the latest podcast. You'll also be pleased to know that the podcast is now available on iTunes as well. Thanks very much, and until next time, keep shooting, keep clicking, whatever you do, just whatever you do, don't stop photographing.